You're very welcome. It's uh, good to have you in our company. This afternoon's session with me, um, the head is to look at the nuts and bolts of what goes on with teaching and learning and how we uh, go about the business of inculcating the skills and the knowledge base uh, that informs students' minds and their understanding as they go through school. You're going to hear from uh, two of my colleagues, uh, Ms Wright from the prep school and Mr Picardo in the senior school, both of whom have significant experience in teaching and learning, in engaging with children, and both of whom have significant responsibility at Embley for developing our curriculum and effectively the story uh, that unfolds in your child's education journey as they go through the school. So without further ado, I'll hand you over to my colleagues, who no doubt will turn their microphones on. OK, so hopefully my microphone is on and ready to go. OK, so my name is um, Shana Wright. I'm head of prep at Embley. Uh, and this is the second in a series of Learning to Achieve talks. Um, and this afternoon, I'm going to talk to you about how children learn to achieve in, in prep school at Embley with a specific focus on acquisition of knowledge and skills. If I could have the next slide, please. As I explained in my first session, establishing the conditions for learning must start with a culture, a climate for learning. So Tom Sherrington's The Learning Rainforest is a great visual way of demonstrating this. It goes without saying that a safe, happy and secure environment underpins the successful running of a happy prep school. It's important to explain how we then build from there. To drill a bit deeper, as a school, it's about not shying away from excellence by making it the norm to be proud of our learning and in turn our achievements. It's about establishing a learning environment which celebrates challenge and excellence which rewards effort and persistence um, and where that persistence is a key driver. Once those conditions are established, the rest can happen. We follow a mastery curriculum approach, which is about a deep rooted knowledge built on firm foundations. Secure knowledge goes deeper rather than wider. Greater depth is then about making connections, applying that knowledge in a range of different ways. But let's start at the beginning. If I could have the next slide, please. There are seven areas of learning in EYFS and at Embley we plan activities and outcomes which ignite the children's curiosity and enthusiasm for learning. There are three prime areas and they're communication and language, physical development, personal, social and emotional development. We support the children in four specific areas where the prime areas are strengthened and applied. These specific areas are literacy, mathematics, understanding the world and expressive arts and design. Our teachers in nursery and reception consider the individual needs, interests and stages of development of each child in their care and use this information to plan a challenging and enjoyable experience for each child in all of the areas of learning and development. When working with the very youngest children, it's important that we focus on the three prime areas, which are the basis for successful learning in the other four specific areas. Years one to six cover a primary curriculum with a mastery approach. If I could have the next slide, please. To give you some background, the primary curriculum used to dart about between topics at great speed and with limited coherence. The key to a coherent curriculum, and as a result, a successful one, takes careful sequencing. One example of a key change is in the Key Stage 2 history curriculum, which used to leap about through time, Tudors to Stone Age to Victorians. It's been rewritten to have a sense of chronology, so that children can understand the developments and changes in history over time. Thus, a coherent sequence starting with the Stone Age and Iron Age in year three. In maths, we used to have a spiral curriculum, which worked on a topic for a few sessions and then came back, toing and froing sporadically throughout the year. A mastery curriculum, which is the approach we follow in maths and has continued on into senior school, allows the child to spend time on a concept rather than skipping over it. So moving past a concept before mastery is like trying to build a tower without your cornerstone and may lead to serious confusion later. So in a sequenced mastery curriculum at Embley, we aim for deep learning where children can both retain and transfer learning. Undue pace can actually um, erode learning. We share the purpose of learning with the children, sequence concepts for maximum success and teaching tools are chosen to secure long term knowledge. 
Additionally, the joy of being an independent school is that we can enhance and adapt the principles of the primary curriculum in order to differentiate, be creative and stretch and challenge to fit our setting. As part of this bespoke approach, we have specialist subject staff who work across every year group to give our children specialist and knowledge rich teaching whilst making full use of our 130 acres of parkland and woodland. We also draw on science, mathematics and artistic resources to provide the broadest spectrum of academic, creative and physical learning experiences for each child. So what does that learning look like, that learning journey look like after nursery and reception? If I could have the next slide, please. In year one and two, every day is varied. With a mix of academic, physical and creative lessons, but with English and maths given high priority. Our children learn with specialist teachers for design technology, modern foreign languages, music and PE, with the form teacher leading all other subject areas and a unique and enriched curriculum of activities outside the classroom. Currently, we've introduced a new programme of activity days to replace our trips. And Key Stage 1, who I think you can probably hear outside now, who are off into the woodland as I speak, uh, the Key Stage 1 activity day is happening um, tomorrow on Friday the 13th and will be linked with the Great Fire of London. We'll hold a carousel of activities, the children will make a lavender scent bag, a clay candle holder, they'll weave, write with quills, make bread um, and create gold foil fire insurance wall plaques. Uh, this is just another way of bringing the classroom work to life. And Key Stage 1 also enjoy being part of the whole school community, performing in plays, concerts, um, school assembly and when, when we're permitted to services at Romsey Abbey. If I could have the next slide, please. From year three, all subjects. Apologies, from year three, all subjects are taught by specialist teachers. English, mathematics, humanities, ICT and science are at the core of the curriculum, but a wide and diverse range of subjects such as art, design and technology, drama, learning outside the classroom, which is Emily's very own school in the forest, uh, music and sport provide a broad and balanced curriculum. Our children are inspired and motivated to strive for personal excellence, whatever their starting point, and they're given, given a clear understanding of their own learning targets so they can fully engage in the learning process. They are ably supported by both teachers and teaching assistants. If I could have the next slide, please. The development of character is really important to Emily. So this development of character, character sits alongside Apologies. Uh, this development of character sits alongside the acquisition, retention and application of knowledge. Um, in order to acquire knowledge and use it well, it's vital that as a school we teach learning habits and develop character so as to help pupils achieve their full potential. It's certainly an area which I believe in and is an integral part of an Embley education. Character traits which are developed are many and varied. Some examples are resilience, courage, honesty, self-awareness and compassion. So in practice, what does this look like? Assemblies have purposeful messages and points for discussion based around positive character traits. Character is built through daily interactions with peers and teachers. Teachers model expectations and good practice and interactions with friends are discussed and reflected upon to build that self-awareness, honesty and compassion. We have a lot to learn from our young people. and I'm a great advocate of being braver and bolder and taking risks putting both feet in and giving things a go. This is where we have lessons and discussions at Embley Prep, which focus on growth mindset, being curious and taking risks. A growth mindset approach is about thinking, I can't do it yet. There are three other key elements which are vital in a child's journey through Embley Prep. If I could have the next slide, please. Co-curricular, philosophy and our dig digital strategy. Part of education with character is about opportunity and aspiration. Our co-curricular provision allows children to give things a go, which in turn builds confidence and sharpens skills. We're really excited this programme continues to grow and develop in PrEP, and it's a vital part of that PrEP education, from pottery and reception, to football in year two, to stock market club in year six, a club which is for both PrEP and senior pupils. Philosophy for children happens from reception to year six, and it involves complex and abstract reasoning. 
the purpose of philosophy for children, P for C, is to develop a capacity for high level measured analysis. In this adventure, our children become confident, competent and compassionate learners and are taught to research, reason and problem solve. To apply what they learn to different contexts, to work collaboratively, to share and present ideas and opinions and embrace challenge. We use the P4C approach in our teaching as a tool to enhance speaking and listening skills and encourage reasoning and critical thinking, as well as inquiry and elaboration of ideas. P4C fosters a collaborative approach to spoken inquiry, which enables our children to participate in discussions and value everyone's opinion in a respectful and safe environment. Every aspect involved in teaching and learning can be supported by the effective use of technology in the classroom and at home. And in order to best prepare children for life in the future, children need to learn with the tools of the present. And this is underpinned by our digital learning strategy. The focus of our strategy, therefore, takes into account how lessons are most effective and aims to put in place the means and support that enable our teachers to use technology when it is possible and appropriate in order to enhance the quality of teaching and learning. To this aim, our staff received a tablet device at the end of 2017, ahead of a school-wide rollout of tablets in 2018 and 19. Our pupils from reception to year six now have a one-to-one -one device. This includes access to a digital library, Colin's Big Cat, which ties in with our reading scheme from reception to year two, and Myon for year three to six, which has thousands of books and publications to choose from. There are many individual digital resources which enhance learning, but in current times, it also allows us to switch to remote learning that very same day through Teams teaching, sharing of work, audio feedback and much, much more. There are many wonderful things about being in a through school. Sorry, if I could have the next slide, please. Um, there are many wonderful things about being in a through school uh, with both prep and senior provision. It's the best of both worlds from a friendship perspective. You have established friendships, but you will also make new ones in year seven. Children are already taught by a range of specialist uh, senior school staff who are familiar to them. Uh, the setting is the same and feels familiar, but there's enough newness by being in a different building in a very special one steeped in history. Uh, there's the opportunity to take part in clubs which cross over to senior school. There are also the same wonderful opportunities which you would wish uh, for in any year six prep class. So all children have a leadership role and take a lead in the running of the school. That development of voice, idea and opinion is something which is nurtured in year six in preparation for year seven. Learning to achieve is about rich knowledge and skill acquisition, but it's also about the ability to adapt your thinking and approach to be equipped with the strategies to look at problems differently and to enter year seven with a positive outlook, stacks of resilience, as well as ambition, belief and compassion. Thank you very much. I'd now like to hand over to Jose Picardo um, to talk to you about senior school uh, and learning to achieve. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Shana. Um, I will just uh, allow me to share my presentation with you. Right, is my presentation shared, uh, guys? Good, fantastic, thank you. So, thank you for joining us uh, this afternoon. As my colleague Shana has explained, the journey continues seamlessly into the senior school, where we continue to focus on many of the aspects that um, um, Shana has already highlighted. So you will forgive me for not repeating myself on when it comes to digital strategy and all the other things that go through the school. However, there's various things that we do focus on um, um, when as children progress to us from uh, the junior school to the senior school, which roughly can be summarised on, you know, focusing on what the child enjoys, uh, what the working having to be in school demands and what, edu what the education of, it, of the whole person requires. The way we do this is by focusing on the three areas that Shaina has already identified. Um, but that acquires a slightly different focus as the children progress onto the senior school. So um, knowledge acquisition is essential for us. Um, it's what children come to school to learn. One of the main things that children come to school to learn is to learn about the, um, 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 the different subject areas, which as they come to us to the senior school, they become much more discreet. So the subjects are now dealt with in, in, in discrete subject areas, 
with um, individual focus on each of the subjects following a school timetable, as you might well imagine. This allows us to focus on, on domain specific knowledge so that children are able to learn um, about geography, about physics, about um, um, uh, the different subjects, um, not just the, the, the knowledge that they need to acquire to, to, to know and be competent in those subjects, but the vocabulary and the ways of thinking and approaches to thinking that they need to think uh, um, creatively um, about those subjects as well. One of the ways we approach this, and uh, this is one of the things that makes us quite unique really, is our focus on uh, metacognition and learning to learn strategies. So at Embley, children don't, they don't only learn about maths, physics, geography or Spanish, they also learn about what strategies um, have been shown by cognitive psychology to be best to help you learn about physics, maths, geography or Spanish. So not only do we teach the, sub the specific domain knowledge, but we also teach the children the explicit strategies that they can use to um, um, to help themselves learn and to self-regulate um, their own learning. Now, in the education de debate, I don't know if there are many teachers in the audience. Um, some of you may be teachers or, or, or be um, familiar with the education debates. Very often there's this tension between knowledge and skills. Very often um, educators uh, focus on knowledge to the detriment of skills or uh, on skills to the detriment of knowledge. I don't believe we don't take that approach in the slightest. We are masters at baking our own cake and eating it. So we have we have a focus on both. So our our children will learn about what whatever they need to do to learn um, uh, to be experts uh, to become experts in their subjects to the required level. Um, but they will also uh, do so in a way that uh, fosters their ability to communicate uh, to collaborate and to act and think think creatively. So if you check out our Twitter feed, for example, our Embley Twitter feed, you will see that it's full of examples of uh, children performing and performing um, with an instrument or leading an assembly or presenting and speaking in the foreign language or um, singing or doing a number of um, uh, things that children at Embley have the opportunity to do but maybe they may not get the opportunity to do elsewhere. The, um, um, the focus on knowledge and skills is something that we're very proud of, but something else we pride ourselves is, in is how this focus on both knowledge and skills, not one or the other, allows us to develop the character of um, our children. So they develop, they develop res respect for themselves, uh, for, for each other, for the world around them. They develop resilience, so they, they, they learn the strategies they need to deal with difficult circumstances. And they learn how to lead, how to lead themselves, how to self-direct so that they can become the best that they can be. But also they have experience that they, they, give, they are given the opportunity to be able to lead others. So how do we do this? So I'll focus first of all on the academic side of things um, and I'll just highlight very briefly that in, 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 in Key Stage 3, as they progress from Year 6 into Year 7, Year 7 is the, the first year in Key Stage 3 that continues into Year 9. So in Key Stage 3, we make sure that the curricula remain as broad as possible so as to nurture and develop knowledge and understanding across a wide variety of subjects and discipline. Now, these subjects are all uh, displayed on the board. These are the subjects that we that we do. But the most important message is not necessarily what we do, although what we do is important, but also the fact that all our subjects are delivered by specialist teachers. They're delivered by accomplished uh, geographers, accomplished computer scientists, accomplished mathematicians and linguists. Some, you know, some of these people are nationally recognised. These are experts in the fields and we are very fortunate to, to have them here at Embley um, um, uh, doing what they do with the children here, which is um, which is fantastic. Um, if you look at the list uh, that you have in front of you, you will see that maths, English and science are the core subjects. Um, um, and then um, in, in addition to that, we study the other subjects that you can see on the screen. So as I said at the beginning of this uh, section is broad and 
and um, a varied curriculum. <clears throat> In addition to the weekly timetable slots for the subjects, children are also given time to focus on personal, social, health and economic education. They have pastoral uh, time where they lead debates and discussions during uh, the tutor time and also where they go to assemblies that, that are themed on the various topics that may be relevant to the, the, part the particular year groups and which foster further collaboration, further creative thinking and further leadership. Then after year nine, children uh, typically in January, so the children that are currently in year nine, in a couple of months, they'll have to decide what GCSE subjects they're going to be taking. Um, again, at GCSE, the choice is varied and wide, and it continues to be domain specific, as you might imagine for GCSE. So GCSE and that's year 10 and 11, English, Math and Science remain the core subjects and they provide students with the first five or six GCSEs, depending on whether they opt for combined or separate sciences. More information about the difference between the two is on our website, so I won't, I won't take up our time um, with that uh, today. Um, and then they make up the remaining uh, GCSE choices uh, to a total of nine GCSEs with uh, four optional subjects, which they can entirely choose from the list that you can see on the screen. So in addition to English, Math and Science, they will do a further four subjects um, and this will result in the attainment of nine GCSEs at the end of year 11. Moving on into the uh, into A level. Um, at A level, our students specialise in the subject that will facilitate entry to the courses and careers of their choice. At Emily, we have a wide selection, a wide selection, I beg your pardon, of specialist subject choices, ranging from the more traditional subjects to the more specialist ones, such as uh, politics, psychology, and drama and theatre. In addition to the three A levels, our students are strongly encouraged to complete an extended project qualification, which is worth half an A level and has been shown to play a very, a very positive role in ensuring that our students have access to the first choice universities. But this is not it, as my colleague has already, my colleague Sheena has already identified and Cliff referred to right at the beginning, there is more to Embley than just the, uh, the, the subjects. We, we have developed an Embley pupil profile um, which sets out what we want our students to achieve and which determines how we teach our subjects and how we teach our co-curriculum in order to ensure that our students are authentic, knowledgeable and humble to begin with. So what does authentic, authentic mean to us? So to us, authentic means that we value our own self-worth and we are aware of the role that we play in making the world a better place. We use our sense of purpose, humour and belief to motivate and uh, 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 to motivate our achievement for ourselves and for others. And in doing so, we become knowledgeable. We create and explore our own understanding, our own understanding of the world and the tradition of scholarship across a range of opportunities. And we engage with difficulties and build understanding through challenge. We only learn when our brain is challenged. We only learn when our brain finds something difficult and we have to work it out. That's what learning is defined as according to cognitive psychology. And we're also humble. We learn from both our mistakes and our successes, and we value both for what they allow us to become. But this is not everything. We also aim to be reflective, principled and thinkers. So how are we reflective? We reflect by thinking deeply and honestly about the role, our role and our experiences. And through our honesty and forthrightness with ourselves and others, we become the best version of ourselves. And this is um, modelled not just in domain specific contexts such as subject lessons, but also in assemblies, in co-curricular clubs and during tutor time. We are principled. We value others and treat them with the fairness and respect that our share, shared humanity expects. We value others and treat them all with fairness and respect that our shared, uh, the, the fairness and respect that our shared humanity expects. I've, got, I've said that twice, I beg your pardon. Thinkers, we value others and treat all with the fairness and respect. Okay, that's the third time, that's a new one. And we use reason uh, and directed with initiative and versatility to solve our problems. I was reading recently 
that knowing stuff is the first step to be able to um, to think um, um, about something. You can't think competently about something you don't know anything about. So that's why not only is it important to us to know stuff, but then we also need to be able to think um, um, about that stuff creatively. And finally, um, we, um, um, we expect our children to be collaborators, compassionate and open-minded. So how, how are we collaborators? Well, we share our ideas and work collaboratively to learn and to grow. And we express ourselves with assurance, competently and creatively, listening to and valuing the opinions of others. And we see this happening day to day, hour after hour, in the different lessons when children are given the opportunity to work in pairs or in groups to solve problems and develop their knowledge in that way. Compassionate. We show compassion for others and actively look for opportunities to care for and enrich their lives. And we are committed to making the world a better place. This, for me, is the most important objective. Why are we here if it's not to make the world a better place for ourselves, for our families, for our fellow humans and the other creatures that inhabit the planet? And then finally, open minded. We actively seek to understand and evaluate different worldviews and we use the experience and conclusions to grow. We develop a reasoned understanding of our own values, traditions and the culture and our culture, as well as, as those of others. And with that, folks, that, that brings me to the end of my very brief presentation as to how we um, learn to achieve in Embley. So I'll pass on to um, Cliff Canning, the headmaster. Jose, thank you very much for that, and thank you, Shana. Um, I, I, I wonder, I, I was just thinking about some of the, the things you were saying, Jose. Is it possible just to do a little bit on some of the Rosenshine principles and just to share some of what, what they are uh, at, a, at a high level with our, our audience? Uh, and I was thinking that perhaps, you know, just looking at some of the questions that are coming in, uh, we may actually you know, help you with this by sending out some resources to you, um, but also maybe signposting Jose uh, maybe a reading list of four or five things that that um, you know our audience seem to be to be interested in that they can pick up. But if you could just give us you know a couple of minutes on on some of uh, some of Rosenshine, that would be really helpful, I think. That's absolutely fine, Cliff. Thank you. Could you? Um, um, in, I would love to do that. I have something that I can accompany. Um, if you would you mind taking one of the questions and then come back to me? Sure. In terms of. In terms of the uh, in terms of the support that is offered to to students, um, if students do have uh, dyslexia, there are three, uh, I suppose, levels of of support. The first is where uh, Mrs. Hodge and her department inform the individual class teachers about what <coughs> the needs of the child are. Um, the better to skill up the teacher to actually ad uh, address those. The second is where the teaching assistant works with the child in class. Um, and the third is where perhaps the difficulty is a little bit more pronounced um, and the child does some work uh, both inside and outside <coughs> the class with uh, Mrs Hodge and her department. Um, we get a lot of background information about every child that joins Embley before they start, but equally uh, as children go on their journey, you know, issues and, 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 um, and concerns around learning pop up as they, they grow and they develop uh, and we address those uh, routinely through the course of the year. Um, there was one question around uh, class class sizes. Class sizes vary depending on on the subject. Um, broad brush, they're in the mid to late teens, uh, with some classes at GCC being under twelve, um, and then at, at A level, some classes can be very small, two or three students taking a subject like music technology or such. Um, I'm just conscious that uh, some of the questions around, I'm, I'm, I'm hope I'm, we're hitting the right uh, note on this, but one question talked about the learning to achieve approach that underpins our position. One of that, one of those approaches actually reflects to the methods of instruction um, and Jose will, will pick up on that now. Thank you, Cliff. So on screen you should be able to see um, and there's two, two prongs to this. So there's the principles of instruction, so it's what our teachers, what our teachers do 
Um, and then shortly after that, I'll show you what our students do. So as I said at the beginning of my presentation, um, one of the most important aspects that sets us aside from many other schools is our, our explicit and unrelenting really uh, focus on, on continuing professional development. Um, and these are things that are invisible to parents, but we have a robust professional development program that sees that, that teachers meet every Monday, um, in addition to um, um, uh, our inset days at the beginning of every term, and in addition to our conference uh, that takes place um, at the end of every year. There's a teaching and learning conference that Embly organises and that attracts a, 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 a huge number of uh, delegates from other schools um, and uh, most importantly it attracts really high caliber speakers that come that bring the CPD to us. So at Embley um, we've, we're very proud to say that the CPD comes to us rather than we need to we, we, um, we of course send our teachers away to courses when they, when they need to but we're very very uh, proud that we we have that second prong to, to our approach. So one of the things that we have covered with our teachers over the past three years is the principles of instruction. So there is actually a wide variety of research as to what makes lessons effective. What, how do children learn, learn best? This is actually really um, well codified. And what we do is we share this uh, with our teach, with our with our staff, with our teachers, and and they we ensure that they are these these aspects are applied in the in the, in their practice. We, to be honest with you, we don't necessarily have to enforce it uh, too much because these uh, it is such really good practice that it sells itself. Um, our, our teachers um, are, are able are reflective um, practitioners themselves. They um, uh, model reflection. Um, uh, to our students and they apply what um, um, the research says um, once they compare that to what the ex their experience uh, uh, tells them as well. So it's a, it's, a, it's a process of triangulation. So so what are these things that really, really work in the classroom? So in the, in the, on, on the screen you will see some of these things uh, summarised. So we um, daily review of the materials that we cover in the, in the different lessons is, is a must. You need to be, you need to cover things continually. We do not cover one thing um, on the 7th of November uh, at the beginning of year 10 and then we never go back to it in the course of the GCSE. We continually go back to make sure that knowledge is retained through time, not just for a test. We cover materials in new steps. We make sure that we, 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 make, the, we, we make step by step progress, ensuring that the children understand one step before they get to the next. So this is what my colleague Sheena earlier was referring as mastery. We ask the right questions. We provide models in a variety of ways. Um, um, we ensure the children have everything they need to be able to learn a concept uh, from the, the, the textbook to the content in our digital learning spaces to the uh, skills required to um, uh, learn a subject um, and apply the, that knowledge to become better learners in that subject. In lessons, we guide student practice. So we provide examples on those models and then we provide, we give students the opportunity to practice first with our support and then we begin to remove our support until the children are able to master those tasks um, without our help. And at that point, we're ready to move on to the next thing, which we'll eventually come back to in a cycle to make sure that everything fits together through our, uh, in our curriculum. We check student understandings in a variety of ways. There's a variety of ways to, to assess, from asking questions to doing tests, to doing all sorts, of, just observing what goes on in the classroom. We enable a high su success rate. Uh, research suggests very, very strongly that if you enable a high success rate, and, and to be honest with you, this, this is part, partly a consequence of applying all of the above that I've just mentioned. So if you enable a success rate that provides the self-confidence in the students to be able to continue learning in that subject and to have that psychological um, approach that is positive and they're open to continue learning in that subject. And we, of course, scaffold difficult tasks, provide independent practice, as I said earlier, and then we come back to that review. So we, we look at things daily, but then we make sure we come back to, 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 to things um, 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 periodically to make sure that they are always they're always fresh in our minds. Sometimes it is not possible to uh, start a new topic. Well, most of the time it's not possible to start a new topic without refreshing our knowledge of uh, other similar and linked topics to what we need to 
uh, deal with today. So that's what our teachers, the teachers do at Embley. In terms of what the, what our students do, our students um, are also um, um, exposed to um, this um, um, to, com to the findings of cognitive psychology. And we do this during our pastoral programme, during assemblies and in subjects. Our teachers will very often take time aside from a subject, take a few minutes to explain, well, actually, I'm setting you a vocabulary test for tomorrow, um, but I'm not leaving you just to it. I'm setting you a vocabulary test. I'm telling you what the vocabulary test is, and I'm also giving you the strategies that you can use to best ensure that that vocabulary is retained, not just so that you can do well in the test, but so that you can make progress in the subject. OK, so some of those some of those um, um, uh, strategies that um, we use are, are explained in the on the screen. As you can see, we use retrieval practice uh, quite a lot. Retrieval practice is simply um, it simply means retrieving knowledge from memory. So if you practice retrieving knowledge from, from memory, you become really good at retrieving knowledge from memory. It's like everything else. If you think of the brain like a muscle and you practice something, then you will you will do it effortlessly. Um, and, and the same thing with retrieving knowledge. So most of us will know without thinking that five times three is 15. And we know that because we practice that. So if your brain, if, if that knowledge is, um, um, if we practice retrieving that knowledge and um, that knowledge is just um, available at our fingertips just like that without thinking about it. It means that when in math, for example, if we're facing a, a larger problem, our bandwidth is not taken up by knowing how much time, how much is five times three. We know that straight away. We move on to the more challenging aspects of the task that is um, uh, in front of us. So we can we provide concrete examples we space our practice so we make sure that we keep coming back and we show the children how they can do that themselves in their own learning so we encourage our children to not leave learning to the last minute it's not just before the test make sure that if you've got a big test coming up you 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 know we provide them with the with the guidance and the support to ensure that they are able to self-regulate how they approach their revision and there's other things that we do interleaving subjects uh, to make sure that they're not blocked um, it, it may make sense. To, it may make sense to us. It, it, it is counterintuitive. So many children, for example, will think that if I've got exam week coming up. So, for example, in the senior school at the end of every year, there's exam week. So if I've got my year sevens and they're worried about exam week and they know that um, they're going to have all their exams in a week for all the subjects. So it may make sense to them to think that actually uh, the way I'm going to plan this is on Tuesday morning during the half term, I'm going to revise maths. And in the afternoon, I'm going to revise physics. Uh, on Wednesday, I'm going to do history and geography. And actually, that's the wrong way to go about uh, to go about it. Um, it feels easy. It feels useful because we're spending time in front of a subject, uh, in front of a book. But it's actually not the way that we best learn. We learn best if we actually interleave that learning. So, for example, Tuesday morning at nine o'clock, I'm going to do history. But at ten o'clock, I'm going to do science. And at 11 o'clock, I'm going to do Spanish and then I'm going to give myself a long break. And then in the afternoon, I'm going to come back and I'm going to do two more subjects. And then you interleave it. Now, this feels harder. And it feels as if you're making less progress sometimes because your brain has to work harder. But it is precisely because your brain has to work harder that you remember more. So these many of these self-regulation strategies are counterintuitive. And what we do is we, we make them explicit to our children, to our students, so that they can be the best that they can be. Thank you, Mr. Canning. Thanks very, thanks very much, Jose. Um, I suppose one, one other issue around that is that um, uh, we move the culture of testing away from seeing test as an end. Uh, it's actually a means to an end. Uh, and, and, and this is a cultural issue. Very often children have this sense that, you know, I've taken the test, I've signed it off, I've done it, and they draw a line, uh, that's the end of that particular column of entry and, and move on. Whereas for us, uh, a test is just a, a landing place before the next piece of learning uh, takes place. Um, if uh, if that questioner is happy with that, I'm, I'm delighted. I think Jose has gone through quite a bit around what the children do and what the staff do. If there's anything further, of course, you can always contact us outside of the, uh, outside of the session and out, outside of the chat. But I hope that that has hit the mark. Um, I think Charlotte, that might be uh, as much as as we're able to fit into into this slot. 
Um, so it just remains for me to say thank you uh, very, very much. Um, I think we will uh, do what we can to push out some material around teaching and learning, um, not just uh, about the Emily way, uh, but wider than that to give you a sense of uh, the, you know, the the understanding. If you if you if you have a why, you can cope with the how. Um, so for us, uh, again, thank you very much to, to my colleagues. Um, uh, for us, for now, bye bye. Uh, keep safe, and uh, we'll see you with the next head to head. Bye for now.